Now back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. This is Larry Ray sitting down to every Saturday morning for 90 minutes on ESPN 790 AM. Uh, we appreciate our listeners out there. I uh, had a great uh, uh, open mic Saturday last Saturday. We actually got Ron Wong up at 645. <laughs> The talk from the classic. Uh, I was up already. And he had his bodyguard with him, Deborah Hanks, on there uh, helping him. Uh, well, she she was a tremendous a tremendous help. help. And, I, really and I'm was. sure that you uh, kept up with this next young man because three, did we say three out of the top ten? Is that right? Three, uh, three Strike King pros in were the, in the top ten. That's pretty the amazing. Final weigh in, and uh, that's that's pretty that's, amazing. Uh, that's really amazing. Because um, we didn't mention Todd was six. Todd Faircloth was six. Well, 44. we had two in the top. Yeah, three in the top ten. Yeah, and finishing in ninth place. Yes, and he was coming on strong. Had that tournament gone another day, uh, it could be it could have been a very different. Can you imagine Different a four-day tournament, though? Well, how oh, many no, casts I don't know that, that would be? I could even handle no, it. these this golfers, a, they got people a, carrying their bags for them, as, things as like that, you know? Spectator. You now, if you had somebody in the boat carrying his bag and all this stuff and casting, you know, these things. Right. Hey, we happen. got Keith Combs out of Huntington, Texas. Uh, Keith was ninth in the Classic, uh, 40 pounds, 13 ounces. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, guys. How are you? Oh, we're we're doing we're, well. Wong is fired up over here. He's not even taking his pills today. You know, I mean, he's he's so fired up. He's still in Tulsa. Do you know that? He's even he's his his body's in Tulsa, but his no, it still his, is. Yeah, but uh, congratulations on a on a tournament. I, you know, when you think about uh, how many fifty five is that right? Is that fifty five competitors start the classic? That's correct. Right? Fifty five. Fifty five, yep. and that's uh, fifty four guys you got to beat. And uh, you came in there. and 54 uh, of the best in the world. Best in the world. So talk a little about uh, uh, the experience, Keith, and uh, and your game plan and things along that line. And Ron will start asking the serious questions, and I'll come back with something goofy here. Okay? <laughs> How- yeah, thanks, guys. I mean, yeah, it was a, it was a great classic for me. Uh, it's my highest finish to date. Uh, it's my fifth classic. So uh, uh-huh. it took yeah. me uh, five tries to crack the top ten. And uh, just really, really proud with, uh, of that. You know, of course, you always want to do better. But, you know, considering my practice and kind of what I had to work with, I think I, uh, I pitched a really good event. So uh, I'm happy to get the season started with a good finish. Well, you know, Keith, one of the things uh, I saw was, you know, you had a, a fair day the first day. Um, you had about the same kind of day the second day. But the third day, <laughs> yeah, you made a pretty good jump. I mean, you started out with um, fourteen pounds, fifteen ounces. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. You start out with twelve, fourteen the first day, dropped a little bit to eleven six the second day. Only and had then. three fish, <laughs> but then the last day you had sixteen nine. Yeah. Um, tell us, um, did you have to make adjustments each day? I I did. I did not make an adjustment on the second day, and I really think that that's why I only caught three fish. Um, I was fishing, uh, my pattern was simple. I was just fishing, like, not, never the point of a pocket, always, and not the back. I was fishing the little huh. straightaways in between the two. I was going down those with a little Strike King 1.5 crankbait. Mm-hmm. And I had some fish in the muddy water down towards the main lake that were, I thought, were a little bit better quality. So mm-hmm. I emphasized those fish the first day and i was able to get a limit just i didn't get i only got one big one so the second day i went back and i thought well i'll just i'm gonna i got ground to make up i'm gonna focus on all the those fish the whole day so Mm -hmm. i did i only got three bites but they were good ones you know i had three for 11 pounds yeah Uh, yeah so you know the third day i just decided that look they're not biting early for me i'm gonna use those muddy water fish later in the day I had some fish in the clearer water towards the Elk River. Mm-hmm. That's where I started. And, uh, you know, looking back, I wish I would have started on those clearer water fish, maybe got a few key fish in the boat, keeper, keeper-wise keeper fish, mm-hmm. and then went down towards that mud later. But, uh, you know, it is, it is. I heard you guys talking about it, it's just a three-day tournament, you know, and I'm, it, it's just <laughs> <laughs> by the third day you're figuring them out. But, yeah, you know, that's, that's unfortunately, that's the end of the show for us. So uh, uh, I'm not going to complain, though. Right. You know, a lot of there was a lot of talk, Keith, there at the uh, tournament 
that the first two days it was calm. The wind was calm. The last day the wind finally decided to blow. Do you think that that had anything to do with how the fish bit? Oh, absolutely. You know, it, I was surprised that it did um, affect them as much as yeah. it was. because The lake was really muddy, and I thought, yeah. you know, wind or no wind, it's going to be about the same. But we practiced in wind, and it just yeah. makes it much easier to, you know, to break down. If you go into a pocket on Grand, it mm-hmm. looks from one bank to the other, it, it's both both sides are going to be pretty fishy. It's, it's going to be rocks and boat docks. Yep. But yep. if you have one side that the wind's blowing on versus the calm side, ninety yep. percent of the time, pick that windy side, and it just allows you to cover much more water. Yeah. You know, a while ago you were talking about you didn't fish the secondary points or anything like that, or the channel swings, but the straightaways. I mean, that's kind of the transition or the highway that bass used to go towards shallow water in the spawning areas and these fish are just now starting to move up into the shallow water because you know when practice started the water temperature was in the mid 40s and it climbed all the way into the mid 50s by the end uh was that kind of your thought pattern i'm going to catch these fish coming in yeah i I think there were a week or two weeks from really wanting to move in and make a you know make a bed but they were you know, I really started my practice kind of keying on, like, secondary points, and I wasn't getting bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those fish were on those straightaways because they had, I mean, they had very quick access from shallow to deep there. Right. You know, that, was the, that was the steepest banks. Mm-hmm. Um, and oftentimes I would go down one of those straightaways, and you'd have to work a long distance, but if you found any irregularity, like, where the channel got a little bit more defined up against that bank, right. that's where you could emphasize, you know, slow down, fish that a little bit more thoroughly, um, and, and get you a bass out of there. But, uh, you know, they didn't want to be on the secondary points for me, um, or they didn't want to be in the backs. They, they right. wanted that, that transition between the two. And, yeah, I think that's where they were staging. Well, let me ask you, and again, we're talking to Keith Combs out of uh, Huntington, Texas, on Outdoors with Larry Ray, uh, ninth place at uh, the Bassmaster Classic uh, Tell me what you thought about uh, Edwin Everett's final day. Well, I, I mean, I was I was thoroughly impressed. Um, I mean, I I uh, kind of I have known Edwin and kind of followed his career my whole career because you know he's a Oklahoma guy close to Texas. He was fishing when I was really young. I remember Edwin fishing um, like Angler's Choice Pro Ams and things like that in Texas. So I knew of him early and. Um, and Edwin, Edwin is a. Uh, everybody knows, you know, he's a he's a great fisherman. The, the thing I observe about him is he pushes it to the limit. I mean, every time. I mean, if there is anything, you know, whether it means running through shallow water to get to something nobody else is fishing, right. or making a <laughs> making a long run in the Great Lakes, or you know, just um, gosh, I remember a tournament on the Red River, the Classic on the Red River, Edwin. Me, Edwin, and Faircloth fished the same creek, and hmm. me and Faircloth left because it was um, the lock schedule. We wanted to yep. make the lock schedule. Yep. Edwin, Edwin didn't leave. He fished, and he, you know, he slid in after our lock. He still made it to the weigh-in on time. It was a huge risk, but right. um, you know, my hats off to him because, like I said, he's a huge risk risk taker, and uh, you know. It's going to pay off big or it's not going to pay off at all, but, uh, you know, I, I really like that style. Well, I mean, uh, when Edwin Evers uh, came up with 60 pounds, 7 ounces, but 29-3 on the last day uh, for Edwin Evers. And, and, you know, another Oklahoma guy, one of those uh, towns, uh, Ta-La-La, Oklahoma. I love that. I love names like that, you know. So, But uh, you guys came in there, and, I, you know, congratulations again, Keith. I know that um, – uh, this is stepping up for 2016, uh, and your next assignment is? It's going to be the uh, St. John's River. Uh, that's right. That's Florida. what you're heading down. We were just talking about you're going from fishing for bass to manatees. You know, I mean, <laughs> yep, <yeah. laughs> when you get down there, and in in, in, how do you how do you get yourself, you know, all geared up for one style of fishing, and, and, and then all of a sudden you're heading to Florida? What do you do? How do you do that? Um, it's going to be 
a total change of tackle. Um, <laughs> yeah. we, you know, we're we're going from fishing rocks and wood to a place where there's <laughs> basically no rocks. Yeah, I mean, that's what people don't understand. I mean, when these the Major League Baseball players, they know these ballparks. <laughs> they go around. The, the basketball courts are the same. Uh, you, uh, the golf courses are, are different. And they, but, they don't, but fishermen, you go from Oklahoma in the wind and whatever it might be to Florida now. Keith, yeah. tell all of our listeners real, real quickly, the color of bait you use yeah. and, and, and the rod and reel and line you use. Because a lot of people, they think, well, they're doing something. But a lot of people don't get into that kind of detail. Yeah, I mean, I kept it simple. I mean, one of my one of my confidence baits is a Tennessee shad colored Strike King one. There you go. Yeah, man, I use it across the country. That's what I relied on in this tournament, and I threw it on a uh, seven foot power tackle, uh, all glass fiberglass rod, mm-hmm. um, fifteen pound Seaguar, right? Vivex fluorocarbon, and. Um, I threw it on a I threw it on a fast reel. I mean, I wasn't reeling extremely slow, and uh, just uh, for control purposes, I threw it on a, uh, a Shimano Chronarch uh, CI4. Right, and, uh, light reel too. Yeah, you, I mean, man, it's a great setup. You can you can take that setup right there and just about cover everything that has to do with crankbait. Well, a, a great uh, tournament. I want to uh, we want to wish you well in 2016. Uh, Keith, I know we'll be keeping up with you because we've got your number, you know, right. so we'll be able to follow you. Uh, I know all of the, the Strike King family here in uh, in Collierville is uh, excited about what happened, and uh, keep going, buddy. Okay, and I know Ron Wong will be keeping track with because he's everywhere. If, it, if there's a Wong there, it's him, okay? I'll see you down the road, all Keith, right. and uh, at some of the elites. All right, buddy. Have a great day. We'll talk to you again, all right? All right, guys. Thanks for your call. All right, thanks. Keith Combs. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, and now it's time for a little fun. We'll find out what's going on in West Tennessee tourism, hopefully, and then uh, what's going on in Kentucky Lake. And then we'll close out the show with uh, who's this guy that we got on the final segment? I can't. Uh, uh, hey, we've got a huge, yeah, huge surprise. And I have to tell you, yeah, I'm surprised that we were able to get our last guest. We were able to get, I mean, Ron Wong, buddy. I mean, the guy never sleeps. I mean, I'm my computer's down at home, and I'm getting texts from Ron at 10 o'clock at night, all right? Be right back on Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. You can find